Hello, everyone. My name is Dakota Decker. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at GeoOrbital, and today I'm going to do a very in-depth installation of a GeoOrbital wheel on a variety of bicycles. Before we get started, make sure your bike is in good working order and safe to ride. And remember, without the disc brake adapter, the GeoOrbital wheel is only compatible with rim brakes. Now the first step of the installation is to get rid of that useless old front wheel you've got. First thing we'll need to do is loosen the brakes. Now, like most bike components, there are more variety than you would think possible. But by far the three most common are side pull caliper brakes, cantilever brakes, and V-brakes. We'll start with side pull caliper brakes. On this style brake, where the brake cable ends, you'll typically find a lever here. When the lever points down, as it is now, it locks the brake pads into the riding position. To loosen them, simply flip this lever to point up, and you'll notice the brake pads widen. For a bike with cantilever brakes like these, you'll notice that the brake cable splits into two here. One side is bolted into place, while the other is just held into place by tension. To release these, pinch the brakes together around the rim, which will put slack on the line, and then just detach the side that was held by tension. When you release, you'll see them pop open like that. For a bike with V-brakes, the brake cable is again held with tension, but there's only one side this time. So again, pinch the brakes together against the rim and unhook the brake cable from its seat like that. Then let go and they'll spring open. Next, we'll need to loosen the axle. For this, there are two primary methods which almost all bicycles use. Either a quick-release skewer, like the Geo Orbital wheel has, or lock nuts. For the quick-release skewer, on one side, you'll find a lever like this, and on the back side, there'll be a nut. Start by flipping this lever 180 degrees to loosen it partially. Then while holding the nut, spin the lever counterclockwise. You shouldn't need to remove this completely, so if you notice that you loosen so much the nut comes off, simply spin this back on one or two turns to secure it in place. For an axle like this with lock nuts, the axle is actually longer and extends through the fork enough to get a nut on either side. So to loosen this, we're gonna to need to take a wrench to fit over the nut, and twist it counterclockwise to loosen it. And the same on the back side here. With the brakes and axle loose, we can now remove the front wheel completely. Hold the wheel with one hand, hold your brakes handlebar with the other, and simply lift it right off. Now for the fun part. Grab your geo-orbital wheel. There's a couple things we can prep to make the installation a little easier. Now first off, because the rim and the inside spin independently, you're gonna wanna make sure you hold the rim from the top here between the two small rollers opposite the battery and the motor to make sure you don't get pinched in there. Now place the wheel down. First thing we're gonna do is wanna unscrew the skewer a bit to make sure there's lots of room for the dropouts to fit in there. Might as well just take it all the way off and then screw the nut back on one or two turns. Second, take these two rubber straps, make sure they're pointing forward and rested against the hub here. Third is take this torque arm, make sure it's kind of centered in the wheel and the rubber pieces are sitting naturally. And last, push any excess slack in this line back into the wheel and rest the throttle back here on the battery. Great. Now we'll reverse the process of putting the wheel onto the bike. So, align the fork dropouts with the axle and set it down right there. Press down a little bit and make sure that the axle is fully seated up in the dropouts. Now like before, we're gonna hold the nut on the back side of the quick release and spin this clockwise. Now, if you haven't used a quick release before, it can be a little tricky figuring out exactly how tight to make it. Basically, you want to stop around the time you start feeling some friction when you spin, and then take the lever here and try to flip it 180 degrees. If it's so tight that you can't flip it at all, you have to unscrew this a little bit. And if it's too easy that it just pops off with one finger, then it's not tight enough. The sweet spot should take just about your full grip strength maybe even both hands. 
Now this is the main attachment point to keep your wheel on the bike, so make sure that's nice and snug. The next step is securing this torque arm here. This is meant to keep the center of the wheel from rotating when the motor kicks in. Keep the inside from spinning and to protect your forks as well. So rotate the entire center of the wheel forward until these rubber pads touch the back of the fork. Then take one of these rubber straps on each side, wrap it around the fork, and back over the torque arm and seat it fully behind the head of this nut. Now you don't have to pull these really hard, just make sure there's no gap between the strap and the fork. I want to do the same thing on the back side here as well. For a bike with a fender, with support bars like this, you're going to need to get the torque arm past its supports so it rests on the fork itself. Now you'll notice that the torque arm has the ability to slide back and forth like this to help with that. So push it all the way to one side and get it past one of the supports. Then slide it back to the other side to get past the second support. Now center the torque arm again. Make sure the rubber pieces are back in their starting position. And then rotate it forward until these pads touch the fork. If your bike's forks are exceptionally wide or large, like those with front suspension often are, you may find that it's hard to get the rubber strap fully seated over the head of the bolt here. If that's the case, remove the strap, and we can actually loosen this bolt up to make it longer. So to do that, you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen key. If you take this out more than a couple threads, we actually have extender arms that can block the threads here to protect the rubber. To install these, Take out the bolt completely. Put it through the extender and screw this back in. Now you can see we made these bolts exceptionally long for a lot of adjustment here, but if one bolt isn't enough, you can do the same on the other side as well. When you're done adjusting, just make sure they're engaged into the torque arm, at least four or five threads. So once you've gotten the range you need, move this rubber pad here to be behind the fork and then latch the strap back over the torque arm and fully around the bolt head like that. Next, we're gonna tighten the brakes again around the rim. So like before, we'll start with the side pole caliper brakes. Just take this lever that we flipped up and flip it back so it's pointing down again. For the V-brakes, pinch them back together against the rim, then latch the brake cable back into its seat here. For the cantilever brakes, pinch them together against the rim again, then take the loose end of the cable and latch it back into its seat. Test the fit of the brakes by rolling the bike back and forth a few times and grab the front lever here to make sure it stops the bike. If you feel the brakes dragging on the rim before you press the brake lever or doesn't stop the bike fully after you press the brake lever, you'll need to adjust the brakes for a better fit around the rim. Last, we'll take the throttle here and pull it up towards the handlebars to extend the cable. Flip this metal lever here away from the throttle to loosen the clamp, and then detach this latching arm from the support arm. Now take this gray piece of rubber. You'll notice there's a little guide on one side. Face that towards the ground and put the open end towards the front of the bike, right where you think the throttle is going to detach. Now take the clamp, wrap it back around that rubber piece, and try to latch the uh, latching arm back to the support arm here, and try to close the lever again. If you notice that it's too tight, there is a set screw on the bottom here that you can loosen up to create some more space in there. If it's easy to slide around, just unlatch the clamp, tighten it up a little bit, and latch it back in place until it holds itself there. To adjust where the throttle sits, or switch it to use with your left hand, you're gonna to need to use the tool that we shipped along with your wheel in the accessory bag. Look for the Z-shaped Allen key. You'll notice that one end of the Z-shaped Allen key is a little bit narrower than the other. Use the smaller side on the bolt head exposed on the back of the clamp here. Spin this until the clamp comes completely in two. Now take the narrow side again Loosen the throttle and remove it completely from its mount. Flip this over and put it right back in place. We'll leave that loose for now to adjust later. So tighten the two pieces of the throttle back together. Now 
Now we'll take the clamp off completely along with the rubber piece. And as you pass it to the left side of the handlebar, pass it through the wheel itself. That way this cable won't rub on the tire here. Then again, as the other side, start with a piece of rubber, wrap the clamp around it, and lock it in place. Now you can adjust where you want the throttle to sit. And again, use the Z-shaped tool to lock the throttle right where you want it. Tighten that down. There you go. If your bike has drop bars like this one, there's a few other places you can attach the throttle. You can either place it like this and pull backwards with your thumb. In this position again, pushing forward with your thumb. Or down in this position, again pushing forward with your thumb. Congratulations, your wheel is now fully installed. The only thing left to do is turn it on. For that, you're gonna need the key, which is also found in that accessory bag. Take the key, insert it into the battery here, and turn it clockwise to this on position. Now if the lights on your throttle are not on already, press the small gray button on the side here, and the lights will illuminate, indicating that the wheel is now powered. Now to actually use the wheel, it's as simple as pressing down on this thumb pad here. And it's gonna act just like a gas pedal in a car. The more you press, the faster you'll go. And when you let go, it'll snap back to the neutral position and apply some regenerative braking to help slow you down and charge the battery. If you prefer to use your bicycle for exercise, the G-Orbital wheel also has an assist mode to help it feel more like your standard bicycle. To use this, simply start pedaling from a stop and the wheel will automatically kick in a small amount of assistance. Now, if you press the throttle, this will override that mode until you come back to a full stop. If you want to get back to assist mode while you're still moving, you can do so by pressing the button on the throttle here once to turn the power off, and again to turn the power back on. This will put you back into assist mode until you once again press the throttle. Now let's take a quick look at the lights on the throttle here as well. These indicate two different things. If the throttle is not engaged, they'll show roughly how much life is left in your battery. All three lights indicate that you're between 50 and 100% battery power, or roughly 10 to 20 miles of range. If you're down on just the yellow, the first two lights, you've got maybe 20 to 50% battery left, or five to 10 miles of range. And if it shows just the one red light, that means you're less than 20% power and have less than a five mile range. If you find yourself on just the red, you should make sure you're on your way to a charger. When the throttle is engaged, these instead indicate how much power is being drawn from the system. You may find that when you're at full power, but you're going up a steep hill with the throttle fully down, these lights may indicate just the red, which shows that the battery is really struggling to get you up that hill. Versus if you're on flat and level ground, even when the throttle is fully down, they may show all three green, indicating that it's drawing just a little bit of power. This is helpful to know how much strain is on the system to help maximize your range. Now, before you go on your first joyride, let's quickly go over how to charge the wheel. First, recommend turning the wheel off, either up here at the throttle or down here at the key, just to make sure you don't accidentally hit the throttle while it's charging. Now, you should have received this charger along with your wheel in the box. You're gonna wanna take this in here and plug it in to your standard wall socket. This one happens to be an American plug, but you should receive the type of plug that fits your standard socket at home. Take the other end of the charger here, rotate this little hatch out of the way, and plug it in right there next to the key. Now you'll notice these two lights have turned red. This indicates that power is going out of the charger into the battery and it's actively charging. When the battery is full, these lights will go from red and red to red and green, which is the same thing you'll see when it's unplugged. Now, we can also take the battery out of the wheel completely and charge it separately that way. Take the key from the off position, push in and rotate counterclockwise to this unlock position here. Now remove the key, grab the battery from the base, lift all the way up as far as it'll go, and then off to the side. Now this is the full battery here. You'll notice it has this little handle to make it easy to carry as well. So outside of the wheel, it's the same process. Take this free end of the charger, plug it in right here, and you'll notice that the battery is charging. 
Now I'll reverse this process and show you how to put the battery back into the wheel as well. So same as before, start as high up as it'll go in this cavity here. Press it back in towards the fork so it catches on its brakes and then slide it all the way down to the bottom. You turn the key in and turn it to the off or on position and that'll lock the battery in place. Well, that should be everything you need to know to enjoy your new Geo Orbital wheel. We appreciate your support and we hope you really like it. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us on our website and we'll be happy to help. See you on the road.